Thank you. Senator Mark Dirk. Sorry. Senator Mark, Mark Sherry, please. Thanks very much, and thanks, Minister, for, for being here. Um, Um, from, from his experience as chairman of IFSRA, Brian Patterson suggested to the inquiry, and I'm quoting, a modern financial regulator needs a board with regulatory experience and skills. It needs an enabling legal framework with strength to counter the naturally powerful influence of the banking sector. It needs to be well resourced, to have a fast moving capacity to develop its IT capability and to recruit expert staff. It needs freedom of action and clarity in its legislative mandate, and it's single-mindedly to prioritise the stability of the banking sector over other competing public policy goals. Do you believe that the current structure adequately fulfils each of these criteria? Yeah, you, you read your list very rapidly, but it seems to me that uh, the way the central bank is structured now and the way it's bedded in law uh, allows it to fulfil all those. I mean, the central bank is the single regulator now and it has the capacity. It's independent on the law. It also is very well resourced because it's very profitable. And uh, it isn't uh, subject to any of the recruitment embargoes that government departments have been subject to. So it has hired an awful lot of extra staff. And there's extra staff, uh, there's, there's people available of high expertise in Ireland now coming out of the universities. And some of them have worked abroad in the city of London and elsewhere. So the expertise is there. So I think they have the capacity. In terms of the board that they report to, uh, in central bank uh, terminology, is called the commission. Uh, but they have a, there's a lot of very serious, serious people in there. And uh, they seem to have a, a high level of competence. What was your last, uh, the only doubt I had was your last sentence. What was, what was your last thing? That but it was? needs the freedom and action of clarity in its legislative mandate. Mm -hmm. uh, that it's single-mindedly focused to prioritise the stability of the banking sector over any other competing goals. Yeah, there was a debate about that back in the 90s, you know, and there was an Oireachtas committee put in place under uh, Deputy Michael Ahern, and I served on it. And at the time, the argument was that uh, because it single-mindedly, uh, because the central bank single-mindedly concentrated on the stability of the bank, uh, it ignored consumer interests. So that's the only qualifier I'd have. I think there has to be something in that list there uh, to look after the interests of consumers. And it's not just the solvency of banks and keeping banks uh, you know, moving forward and getting them to lend into the economy, which is of vital importance. But the ordinary person dealing with the bank, there must be a regulatory function to protect their interests as well and vindicate their interests if they're transgressed. Maybe your committee in the 90s was over-successful because <coughs> the evidence we've been, been getting was that the, the focus of the regulator in the central bank was, was only on the consumer side and nothing on the macro prudential side. And just in the same question, just to, to follow on to the next question rather, what we've had without prejudice to the various witnesses we've had from the regulator in the central bank, a number have said they had difficulty in getting their case across to senior management or indeed the board uh, in one instance uh, where, where the senior economist was saying that. Are you happy that there are procedures in place now, that if there are contrarians, and you yourself highlighted that you know, the contrarian view isn't always welcome, uh, are there uh, adequate provisions now and measures uh, and a structure which welcomes that and ensures that however junior and particularly however senior somebody <coughs> with the contrarian view, that that will reach not only the governor and the seniority within the bank and the regulator, but also your own office? Yeah, like without having worked in the place, you're never sure how internal procedures worked. But in terms of accountability, uh, the governor of the central bank is very amenable to uh, the Oireachtas, for example. And I understand he's appeared before the finance committee on a number of occasions with his senior staff and shows no reluctance to any answer any questions that are put to him. And, uh, you know, in, in the business we do as, as, as public representatives, you often get the contrarian view and you have an opportunity to put it to the governor. So yes, I think I think it's, it's a lot better than it was. Evidence that we've received from John Hurley, former governor of the Central Bank, from the night of the guarantee suggests that uh, to allow Anglo-Irish Bank to fail, 
uh, that it would have been his view uh, that it would set the country back a number of decades. I think 30 years was mentioned, perhaps not by him, but in representing what he said by somebody else in the room and giving evidence. Uh, would you, from what you know, would you agree with that? Well, uh, you know, any big institution that has loans right through the economy, uh, even if it becomes insolvent, if you pull the plug overnight, there'll be huge damage. Like Lehman Brothers, when the plug was pulled in the States, did huge damage. Uh, but it can be wound down over time, uh, which is what we decided to do with the liquidation. So yeah. my, my answer Sorry. is that if you do it like in one fell swoop, it will create a lot of damage, which would have repercussions across the economy. But if you do it in a planned systematic way, because you've got a dud and you need to remove it, well then uh, you can do it, as we're doing it now. So if you had your time again, would you support the guarantee again? I supported the guarantee. And I qualified what I was doing on the night, and I spoke to my own people, and I said, look, we don't have much choice but to support it, uh, but it's too widely cast. And then I asked the question during the debate to know was it intended to solve a liquidity problem or a solvency problem, and the late Brian Linehan assured me uh, that it was liquidity. Now, I don't think he could have given me any other answer on the night. If he said to a solvency, the house would have come down and the sky would have fallen. Like, so, But I, I, I don't think, I mean, the way he looked at me, I knew that. I mean, I was, I was quite friendly with him, like, so I, I had a different view. But I think the, the, if there was a mistake made on the night, it was that there wasn't a quick move to recapitalise shortly afterwards. Because it was as clear as crystal that very quickly, even if people didn't realise it on the night, that there was a solvency issue staring us in the face. And it wasn't just liquidity. Um, very graciously, uh, on the day the late Brian Lennon died, you, in the media you said, and I'm quoting, I always said he was a very effective in controlling the budget, which was totally out of control when he became minister. He was very thorough on that fiscal side. He was less successful in his banking to policy. His decisions there were bad in my view, but I would excuse him because many of his decisions were based on incomplete information or downright bad information. Could you expand just on specifically well, the first of all, incomplete like him, or bad banking information? Uh, uh, first of all, I liked him and, ex uh, and respected him. And uh, news of his uh, untimely death came in when the government was having a meeting in family. And I did it outside the door in family for the one o'clock news, which you've just quoted. And, uh, you know, I wanted to be consistent with the attitude I had taken uh, when I was opposing him in opposition. And uh, I had said in opposition on interviews uh, that I agreed largely with the fiscal policy he was pursuing, but I didn't agree with the banking policy. So it was a reiteration of what I had done. Uh, when I was the spokesman opposing him, uh, but he'd have known that. Like, but we, you know, you know in, I mean, it's pretty well known around Lancer House. We we spent a lot of time together. You know, oh, absolutely. Um, there's no issue with that at all, and, and it was very great. No, I, I'm I'm specifically interested in the reference to uh, bad information and incorrect information on banks. So, having had taken over as minister, Ooh. had you <coughs> reason to believe that the minister? That before you, irrespective of the emotion of the day and a friend passing on, uh, had you information which would say that Minister, the then Minister Lennon, was given not just bad information but incorrect information? No, I don't think he was given bad information or incorrect information by the Department of Finance. Uh, but I don't think the banks gave full information that I should guarantee. I don't know. I mean, you've heard them here. But my view always was that full information wasn't given. Uh, to the policy makers around the time of the guarantee. And certainly I don't think Anglo Irish Bank gave full information, but maybe they did. Yeah. But I was actually referencing something that Brian had said himself in an interview. And that's what I was back referencing there. Okay. Just to you take know, like with, you know, in all these situations, and you're in politics a long time and you come from a, a distinguished political family. You, you, you owe to everybody uh, to, no matter what you're saying, to be consistent and truthful. So I was trying to make sure that there was a fulsome tribute being paid, uh, which I was sincere about, but at the same time 
I didn't want to pretend that I hadn't been critical about certain aspects of what he did at the time, and that's that's why it was very. No, no, I do. That's one yeah, no, I, I, I do. I understand that completely. Just uh, on, on the comment that you, you felt that the banks weren't giving all the information the night of the guarantee to officials. Do you mean to the politicians, or do you mean to the central bank to the politicians, or do you mean from the banks to the central bank to the politicians? No, I have no first-hand knowledge of it, but I, like everybody else, okay, I'm very one. interested in the evidence the bankers gave. You know? Grant, just on a lighter note, and to conclude, I was reading an article in recent days in The Examiner. It was written by Ger Howland. It was about a completely different issue. But he spoke of the file in the department that the minister never gets to see, and it's the one that's been prepared for his successor. So if there is such a file, was there anything in the one that you were given about your predecessor and that government? which you might like to share with us today uh, that might be of interest to our deliberations. No, uh, Brian Lennon, late Brian Lennon, was held in very high regard in the Department of Finance. Any official I ever spoke to spoke well of him and uh, spoke well of his abilities and also spoke in terms of he being a nice person to work with, you know. And uh, I have already told the department I'm going to succeed myself, so <laughs> it's on that basis they're preparing the fight. Very good. Thank you. Thank